Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Chuck Dixon is absolutely taking his shots at people in the industry because we have two articles coming out about Chuck Dixon today. So please make sure you guys stick around for those videos. But in this particular video, we're going to talk about how the fact that Chuck Dixon literally just came out and slammed the American comic book industry for pandering to females. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Chuck was just recently on a podcast for Bounding Into Comics, and they have two articles talking about what he said, and one of which was that. So let's get into this article, guys, from Bounding Into Comics. But of course, before we do, if you are new here, just consider hitting that subscribe button, man. I would greatly appreciate it, and like the video to push us out into the YouTube algorithm. So it says, Riververse scribe Chuck Dixon slams comic book industry's ideological pandering to female readers. They think third wave feminist stories are going to bring back girls no no they're not and now of course we've been seeing examples of this throughout american comics for the last few years it's all been basically gender swapping race swapping make this character female make this character gay this is why south park came out with the episode and did the ultimate hilarious thing which was dissing kathleen kennedy and making a meme out of it which we all know what that meme is which is put a chick in it and make it gay this is what it is ladies and gentlemen so chuck dixon who is a legend in the comic book industry is coming out and fighting against the nonsense that's happening and it's good to see somebody like that fighting against what the mainstream is doing so it says in taking aim at one of the most self-destructive yet common editorial problems of his prior employers former big two and kermit Ripperverse author chuck dixon has pushed back against the mainstream comic book industry's ongoing tired attempt to bring in female readers by injecting third wave feminist stories into their work as according to the veteran creator not only does this rhetoric miss exactly what said demographic actually enjoys about comics but it also actively turns them away now again one of the things that i say all the time is don't get it twisted ladies and gentlemen marvel dc all of these american comic book companies they know exactly who their audience is okay marvel and dc knows who their audience is marvel and dc knows who buys comic books they know it's usually not women they know it is predominantly male dominated area and they know this but they are literally choosing to forgo sales they are literally choosing to say you know what money doesn't really matter we're going to spend our money to push a message that we know is not going to make us money in return but we can at least feel good about it on twitter we can at least get our likes and retweets on twitter because that's clearly what's more important to sustaining a company it's not profit no no no, no. it's just likes and retweets on twitter so they're choosing actively choosing to go against their own demographic pretending as if that demographic is sexist misogynist or lately just doesn't even exist they're trying to pretend as if the male audience does not exist and they're making all of these female oriented characters that not even females want to read about it's really quite sad it says the Alpha Core writer offered these thoughts while speaking to his artistic collaborator in his Clinton Cash graphic novel, Brett R. Smith, during the second episode of the latter's Bounding Into Comics exclusive live stream, Escape the Future. Therein, at one point during the pair's discussion of Dixon's first comic for the Ripperverse, Smith raised his frustrations with how the current comic book industry has abandoned its key male demographic, asserting to his guests something else we've talked about is that it's always been a male centric or it's been an industry which has been driven by four male readers readers or for boys however before smith could continue dixon playfully interrupted not always not always before explaining in the 50s and 60s it was girls buying the comic book market archie young romance sold three and a half million copies a month for years elaborated the punisher war zone one uh volume one writer you had lots of romance titles you had archie and girls were reading regular comics too they were reading little lulu and uncle scrooge and green lantern my sisters read green lantern because they thought hal jordan was cute now again the funny thing is even though these are such typical girl tropes you know what i mean romance titles oh finding the male character uh, cute and that's the only reason why you read it the fact is this stuff is what sells this is what happens when you actually try to sell to specific markets right if you're trying to sell to females why are you making the female characters you're writing act like men it doesn't make any sense not even women want to read about that nonsense most women will skip over it when they see an overly masculine female trying to play center stage here or they would rather read about 
about a male taking a masculine role. That's just the truth, man. The numbers don't lie. So I don't understand why Marvel and DC think the message is so important that they rather write completely ridiculous female characters that not even women want to read about and think that that's going to make them money. They know it's not going to make them money, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. These, these people are insane. They are ideological pests, but they damn sure are not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. It says, returning to the present, Dixon then noted that over the years, the industry had totally abandoned that female market, and now they don't know how to get it back. They think third-wave feminist comic book stories are going to bring girls back to read. No, no, they're not, he declared, because girls, your female readership, I was successful on Nightwing Volume 2 because I was writing the kind of stories girls like, too. You know, there was a lot of inner relationship. It was a lot more of a dense plot. It wasn't just about guys punching each other. Same thing for Spider-Man, he continued. Spider-Man was successful for so long because of the soap opera elements, and I call these soap opera elements because that's kind of a pejorative. It's more complex human relationships in the story. Women like reading about that stuff, and guys like it too. Bringing his thoughts on the topic to a close, Dixon laughed, and guys like it too, but they won't admit it. Now listen, man, Chuck Dixon knows exactly what he's doing, all right? He's a legend in the comic book industry for a reason. He was hired in the Ripperverse for a reason. The guy knows exactly what the hell he's doing to write a good story in a comic book. Unfortunately, guys like that are either censored or just completely held back creativity-wise by ESG. Fake diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of these fake requirements that are required of writers before they can even write anything really stifles creativity and stifles the mind of someone like Chuck Dixon. So it's good that he's fighting back. It's good that he's speaking out against the American comic book industry, even though he obviously is still in it. But those are the people that truly care, right? People like Chuck Dixon, they're the ones that truly care about the industry. They're the ones that want to see the industry come back to what it was in the past and do its best to try to combat manga any which way it can. But let's be real. Manga is destroying American comic books. It stands absolutely no chance. It's not even close. And it's going to take one hell of a Hail Mary for American comic books to come anywhere close to manga sales. It just is. But that's fine. American comic books can exist in its own realm. It doesn't have to beat manga in order for it to be relevant. It could still do well in its own industry. But unfortunately, they're choosing to forego their sales. They're choosing to forego their customers. They're choosing to ignore their client base, ignore their demographics, and just push the message because unfortunately, American comic books have been hijacked by writers that are so ideologically driven, so ideologically reliant on the message that they have to put it in everything they write. They have to self-insert either the message or themselves into whatever they write. So unfortunately, you don't get the genuine stories that you used to get back in the day anymore. You don't get the stories that are there to simply entertain you and to make you feel something warm and fuzzy. No, you get the stories that are trying to remind you about how racist you are. You get the stories that try to remind you about how misogynist you are. You get the stories to try to remind you about every single social justice fucking annoying thing that's possible in this world. That's the stories that you're getting now. So it is quite unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully people like Chuck Dixon can fight back little by little and bring the American comic book industry back to some sort of normalcy because even though it can never compete with manga, it damn sure it can be doing a lot better than it's currently doing right now. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.